corral, and all he has to see control, guys. The idea of Straight Edge Hardcore was started with a song by the DC area band Minor Threat. Al and the other members of SSD took the lyrics of that song to heart and let it be known through their music and even their clothing that they were now a straight edge band. After they heard Minor Threat saying straight edge, like for those guys in Boston, it became a thing. And even in DC, it wasn't really a big thing. It was just a song, right? If you know the truth, that's all it was. It was a thought. But Al, he made it a thing. And for SSD Control, it was a thing. And for Boston, it became a thing. That's how they were known. To me, straight edge was kid-driven. It came from, from the youth. And so it was appealing to youth because of that. It wasn't coming from Nancy Reagan, you know? It wasn't coming from uh, D.A.R.E. The drug dealers need to know that we want them out of our schools, neighborhoods, and our lives. And the only way to do that is to take the customers away from the product. Say no to drugs. So my idea of straight edge was, straight edge was a choice, okay? Even before I knew about Minor Threat, because I went back in my mind, <clears throat> we went to a show in New York, and I met Henry. I said, what are the X's on the hands? He said, oh, we're all straight edge, you know, something like that. I, I don't know if he called straight edge. You know, and some clubs started having all ages shows, and when they had the all ages shows, they put X's on kids' hands, and, you know, the X's on kids' hands signified that you couldn't drink. So that became sort of identified with the hardcore clan. And then Straight Edge took that X and said, we own that. Immediately I saw Straight Edge became something that was like cool, okay? So to me, it was like the light bulb moment. I said, these guys look really cool right now. I was thinking, if I'm going to be straight, I'm going to be proud of it. So that's when I went home and I think made the straight edge jack and stuff like that. I think a lot of it changed for us when we went to New York and met the guys from D.C. Because I remember coming home from that show, uh, Al and I talking in the car on the ride home, thinking that we wanted to start a scene that was similar to what these new, uh, D.C. kids were talking about. They were talking about the straight edge thing. And uh, they just, you know, this uh, seemed like a really united kind of thing. We kind of wanted to, I don't know, we modeled ourselves exactly after them, but, but we just liked what they were doing and wanted to start something like that. And I remember thinking, you know, when I wrote those lyrics that, you know, hey, I'm, I, I think like there was like four or five songs that I included the concept of straight edge in those songs. So it wasn't like one song, it was just like, this was my expression. The fact that actually Springer sang those lyrics and, you know, didn't give me really any grief, to me was really, you know, like I said, like a powerful thing. Al would come in and go, well, I've been working on this. And he'd go, rrr, 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 rrr. and Jamie would kind of look over and then he'd show him like the, the thing chord, the blah, blah, blah. And then Chris would be like, okay, yeah. And then, and then Al would bring over some, you know, a sheet or whatever and be like, here, I, I wrote this down. Here, try to fit it in. <laughs> try to fit it in. Screw was a good one. I like that one. Very, I don't want your fucking life. You can have your fucking life. I don't need your fucking life. You can have your fucking life. You know, I wrote these lyrics and I I I, wrote, I, I thought this music and the lyrics I like them both, but I used to hand spring of this lyric and it had a, like a million lyrics and I basically said, you know, hey, after that record came out, I heard and I said, wow, that's, 
He's trying to jam a lot of words in about words, too yeah. many words. And I wouldn't even argue or anything like that. I just thought I'd like, jam that shit in. Blah, 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 you know, yubba dubba doo vocals, I call it. But I do think the singing is the most important thing really? in, in any band. It's the and first I ever heard of that. What do you I thought do? I was just drums, an afterthought. Drums I didn't say the first. singer, I said the singing. <laughs> the whole time in the band, I was just an afterthought. The dr yeah. yeah, that's not true. You, you were like the focus, really, to be honest. Uh, you got to have oh a great drama to begin with, so we had a great drama. first I've ever heard this. Thank you, Al. Appreciate it. I didn't say you were great. I said, <laughs> we, needed a great, I said we needed a great singer. <laughs> <laughs>